So it's not how much you make that counts, but how much you can retain it. It's better to make a little less and retain a little more than to make a lot of it and give back all of it again. If you go to your homes, I think 95% of people will have parents or uh, other family members who will look upon the stock market as a gambling bed, as a uh, place where you are supposed to lose money. And no wonder, most people in India, they think stocks and sh uh, shares are exact synonyms of shocks and shares. You talk to anyone, he will never believe your story. So but one thing that you have got in your favor is, when you start work, you will have a lot of money coming into your accounts, your salary accounts, and then you can put that money to work. But we'll go about it in a different way, but let me start with this. So the background of the investment of investing setup in India is such that nobody believes that a large amount of money can be made by investing, first thing. And secondly, nobody believes because there are very few people who have made money in this way. Most of the people have lost money here. So how can you actually understand, I mean, in India won the 1983 World Cup. You don't have too many people saying that I want my child to be a cricketer. Then you've got Gavaskar and Kataldev on the screen. Then you have the Tendulkar and the Kohli's. So now since you have seen two, three, four people, you've seen the IPN. Now if the son is doing well, his parents won't stop him from not playing cricket because they've seen some heroes. In the Indian context, there will be no big person who has made money here. In a scale that Warren Buffett has done in the US, or Peter Lynch has done for his investors in the US, and things like that. So that is one uh, reason why most people in India are very afraid of the stock market. Let me give you a psychological twist to this. Since all of you are from IIMs, and I assume that all throughout your academic career, you have been doing the voice is equal, is it so? Since you are from IIMs, I assume that all throughout your academic career, you first, second, third, fourth, and then you have to go. Okay. Don't say no, sir. Then you would have that. How did you get here? The idea is you would have been successful in your academic life. Get it being successful in your academic life. Let's look at it in a broad perspective. It's easy. You give the syllabus, you read it, you learn it, you practice, you do the publication, combination, binomial theorems, and those things. Sit for an exam, take it, go to score high numbers. And then you will get admitted. Over a period of time, I have seen that people who come first in class all the time, they find it very difficult to take defeat. I am not saying this because I never came first in class in class 12. But what I am telling you this is, when you are doing so well for 15, 16, 17 years of your life continuously, it becomes difficult to accept defeat. And the biggest defeat in the stock market can come to you within 5 minutes of you having bought a stock. You buy a stock at 10 rupees, it goes to 10 rupees 50 pesos. And that is very difficult. But before you come into the stock market, you have to understand that this market doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care. I think Newton lost all his money in the stock market. And then he said, I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies but not the madness of people. <laughs> now the point is, of course with full regard to Sir Newton, the point is, because he lost money, he said there is madness of people. Had he made 25,000 pounds, I don't think you would have said there is madness of people. So, this is another perspective for it. When there is a bubble, we don't blame the bubble. I, in 2000, you know what happened to the NASDAQ, you know what happened to Infosys, it went up to a team of 300. That is because I was not invested. Had I been invested there, I would have rejoiced, I would have celebrated, I would have triumphed. I would have said, what a great start. It's gone up so many times for me, it's changed life for me. Right? So things like that. Can I use this? So, uh, the point is, in the market, the risks of a trade always appear lower after the rewards have been made. So, you can always blame yourself, why did I buy pay industries in 2009 and what was I doing? I was in Delhi and Unitech was doing all these malls and complexes and shopping and uh, residential uh, complexes in 2003. Had I bought at least 10, I had put at least 10,000 rupees in Unitech, it would have grown up X, X number of times. But the risks of this trade always appear more after the rewards have been paid. If you look at it in hindsight, 
and you look at any foresight, it's as much of a difference as night and day. It is just not easy to extrapolate. Art is also very difficult if you're doing a review driving. So why I'm telling you all this is, many of the times we can kick ourselves and say, this is a stock, you know what I missed, this is the one I missed, you know, I missed this stock, my uncle told me to buy it, I could have bought it, I could have become rich. But first thing is your uncle himself would not have bought it. He just gave you a tip. And now he is making life more confusing for you. So a person who looks at every stock that he could have bought and did not bought and did not buy is mostly like a guy who looks at every heavy shop but did not marry. So the point is you have to take these misses. Long, I mean a miss is better than a miss hit. You could say that. But in the stock market you will always have something to feel sorry about something to regret, something to take the pain about, but to make a large amount of gain, you have to be prepared to pay up with some gain, you know, with, with some pain also, because it is not possible for you to keep making money all the while. I'll tell you a story about how I started into the market. Words, most theories, most books, most literature, most documents that you read on the market will tell you you know how you have to make money, you have got to be passionate, you have got to be disciplined, you have got to have a very fixed rule, you have to read a lot, and you have to put devote all your time to the market, it's fine. But being passionate, being disciplined, and being very specific and focused about what you're doing is not possible unless you get successful with intermittent hits on the way. You can't be passionate about the market for five years and you keep losing for money for each of these five years. So you need some success every time. So when somebody tells you about the market and says that you've got to be passionate, you've got to be reading, you've got to be doing this and that and you're a long-term investor. But at that moment you have to look at the and say that that's okay. But the results have to show. That is just like when you start doing any work. Suppose, suppose you want to become a cricketer and you're playing for five years in a field alongside and you don't get selected for even a league side, Leo Luma, or whatever. I don't think you'll be playing for the 60th or the 70th year. And if you're in the market for 7, 8, 10 years without being passionate, and, uh, uh, if you're in the market for 6, 7, 8 years without making money, then you have to be very sure that this is not your primary trade. The primary trade is probably about doing some textile trade in a Chandni Chow Bazaar in Delhi or somewhere else. And every, time, every month you get some money, you blow it up here because you want some entertainment money. I went to Hyderabad uh, uh, last year and there I met a guy, he said, I just do futures and options. I said, do you make money? He said, no. I said, well, why do you do this? Well, no, every month I blow up 20,000 years. I said, why do you do this? No, no, I like it. I like blowing it up. I said, go and take a holiday. Well, no, no, I, do, I, I want to do this. This is what I do. And I'm not joking. I'm serious about this. At least he was upfront with me and he told him that he loves doing it. He said, if I don't do it for a month, I don't feel comfortable, I can't concentrate on my job. So every time, I focus on what to do. I will take, I'll pick up some derivative trade, and then I just let it pass through me. You know, this market, uh, I'll tell you how I started. I started as a very, when I was in college or in, uh, in 1990. That was the, that was the Hashem era. The Pied Piper of Mumbai, you can call it. And he was the one who, actually got all of us into the market, who, anybody who got joined in 1992, because he told us, or rather he showed us that big money can be made by the stock market. And at that time, me, I got into stocks because I just thought that it's an interesting thing to do and you can make money, and something that trades at 10 today is going to trade at 12 tomorrow and 14 the day after. So that was how I started. I had no clue of what I wanted to buy. I just didn't know what to do. There was a guy who used to sell economic times into St. Zivis College, Calcutta. He used to come at 6.30. We used to miss the second period, which used to start at 6.40. And uh, we used to buy the newspaper. Two, three, four of us would have read from the newspaper. You see, we used to read from the back. That is the court pages. That time, there was no internet. So, that was the biggest indicator of whether you've succeeded or failed. And I told my friend, PCL polyester is going to go up this week. And if it didn't go up that week, I would have thought I failed, and if it went up, I thought I had succeeded. That was the only objective. I never knew how much money I had to make. I had no clue on what I am doing. And basically my funda was very clear. I wanted to buy the low-priced stocks trading at the lowest PE. So the PE would have come to me by doing the right side column, and then I used to look at the left. Okay, this is a 3 PE, so what the stock is all about. 
So from three, I used to let my index finger take me to the name of the stock, and then I used to identify five, seven, ten stocks, and all of us would have put money together in there. It was a really foolish way, and that is how we started. Slowly it went on, and uh, in my family, obviously, people were very too much interested in uh, seeing me go into the stock market. So my father was also against it, and everybody, of course, why, why, why just say one person? So then we started him, he wanted me to join his business, so I said, okay, you give me some money and salary every month, and then I will work in the office as well as staff, but I want money to invest. I used to get a small salary every month, I used to put that into the market, and the corpus grew, I got money here and there, I got asked borrowed from my mother and things like that, my grandmother, things like that, and invested. Ultimately, this kept on happening for three, four, five years. I had no clue on how investing is done. I just had no idea on what is to be looked at. Of course, I used to look at the stock of Infosys and read the economic times when they used to say Infosys reports earnings increase of so many percentages. And at that point, I used to think, who would buy Infosys? We used to have long debates with everybody unanimously putting down that this stock can never be bought. If I get every people working at Infosys from Bangalore, put them on a charter flight, get them on to Calcutta and work for me, what does Infosys not? Just empty chairs, tables and computers and laptop. Of course, I don't know whether that many laptop could come at that time. So that was the concept. We just were ignorant, thoroughly ignorant of what we have to do because there was nothing to read back on, nothing to understand. And the only one thing I'll tell you is my interaction, my learning with the stock market increases, increased rather, after the internet came up. Because then you could read about Warren Buffett, you could read about so many people. But in that era of 92 to 2000, if you were a fool, you stayed a fool for eight years. You just couldn't graduate to the next level. But after 2000, if you want to learn, today you go to any, you do a Google search on Berkshire Hathaway. You had so many reports on what Berkshire itself is doing or what other people are doing. So this is an advantage which we get these days, which were not coming to us in those times. So that is how it started. And then again in 2000, you think the Nasdaq bubble I got into the market again. And that time I made a lot of money because there were uh, and that time I used to buy the poor cousins, like ZTV was doing very well in those era. And then somebody told me ZTV, okay, look at Shri Adhikari Brothers. And Shri Adhikari Brothers had floated a channel at that time where Karishma Kapoor was doing their ad. She used to say, jab deko, sab deko. That was the ad and I thought, oh, ZTV is doing well, sub TV will also do well. So I bought sub TV at 135 and I got mighty successful. The stock went right up to 1800. So from 135, I have no clue, I was buying it because I thought when Karishma Kapoor is saying Jab Tego Sab Tego, <laughs> the entire world would watch uh, Sab TV and uh, people will make money. I had no clue of market cap, what market cap means. Of course I had, I knew what market cap means but I never used to employ it. So I thought of ZTV traded so and so uh, price, why shouldn't this stock trade at this price? That was it then about DSQ software because in Infosys I, could, I did not want to buy so I bought DSQ. Penta Media software I bought, I bought Silver Line, and then I used to live it since the idea was always to make a lot of money. The, I wasn't satisfied with a very small amount, I wanted to make a lot of money, so I leveraged myself. So I had to put more money to work in the market. Ultimately, the bubble burst and uh, the bank sold off my shares, and I was in a situation where almost everything was gone. Then again, Meanwhile, my uh, our family business had closed down because of government problems in JNK. My father passed away and I had to relocate back to Calcutta with nothing to do. I started teaching and there were a lot of small uh, MBA colleges <coughs> in Central 5 area of Salt Lake. Small, small colleges there. So there were many engineers who used to come there. They had very little idea of what finance means and I thought that if I could teach them some finance and I could open a development center and get money back to invest in the market. So that is how it started. The rest of it is documented there. But the only thing is, which brings me all the way back from 1992, missing second period, to buy an equipment time, that two rupees, and the guys do black also. Two rupees people used to sell at 10 also on some days, when the demand was more. So, from those days, which brings me back, to, uh, which brings me forward to I am Rachi is, I always try to make it big. But most people in this market can't figure out that the money is more than the money. Jaldi means nothing. If you look at, I'll give you a small example. If you look at this uh, small CAGL formula, which we did, simple like accounting plus formula, P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power of N. There are three things working for you all the time. P, principle, how much money you put up up front. I say, I have 5,000 rupees. Now, how much money you can put up? 
If I can grow it even 100 times, okay, chances are growing 100 times, how much would it become? 5 lakhs. Which isn't too much. But if you put 5 lakhs and you grow it 100 times, then it becomes a sizable figure. So, most of the people, most of us in the market are always fixated with the R, with the rate of return that we will get. The P, the initial amount it will bring to the market is very small. And the N, the number of years. How many years would you like this to compound at? If you grow at 26% every year, which is what I call a 10 by 10, uh, uh, 10 by 10 objective. If you grow at 26% every year, in 10 years, you might grow the money by 10 times. In 20 years, you might grow the money by 100 times, not 20 times, 10 into 10. And in 30 years, it goes up again 10 times. So, that is what you have to look at. And most people, when they start investing into the market, they start with very small amounts of money, which is also correct in some sense because the first money that you bring to the market is supposed to be put down as tuition fees. You should lose it all. I have known very few people who don't lose their first investment into the market. And if you are not losing your first investment into the market, be very sure that you will never learn how to play this game. You have to lose it. So there has to be a trade-off. There has to be a trade-off between uh, how much you think is good enough for you to actually invest and make money and how much you think you can afford to lose. There are three ways to learn. There are three kinds of investors in this market. First is you learn from their own mistakes. Like you put in money and then you lost money. So that's how you learn. Second is you learn from the mistake of others. How can you do that? You can read books on people who have done it, they will make it made in the world. You can go across reading through them. And the third is the people who just don't learn. They have got to put in money every time and they lose it. And then you play the market for it. But over the period of time, it is only those people who learn to who learn from their own mistakes. They only are able to manage out. And one way of learning from their own mistakes is that you have to, to analyze and you have to leave and you have to say that. Okay, you don't have to make money from every stock in the market. There are 7,000 listed stocks in the Bombay Stock Exchange. You don't have to make money from all of them. For you, 5 stocks, 7 stocks, 10 stocks, 12 stocks are enough to create a lifetime of earnings for you. I'll tell you, how many stocks did Mr. Narayan Murthy need to make his money? One. Look at this, one. You give me the name of any big guy around the world. Then you can say that it's a mathematical probability for one Narayan Murthy. We had 500 people who could not make it big. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you are focused in a company, if you understand a certain company, then you're sure to make a lot of money out of it because you will be able to take the ups and downs of the company, you understand it, and over a period of time, it will ensure that you become financially free. Now the concept of financially free or financial freedom that we say to the market is, if you can make your net worth, excluding your, the house which you stay in, equal to, equal to 50 times your annual expense, you can consider yourself to be financially free. What is the logic behind this number? Suppose you have an uh, annual expenditure of 1 million, which is 10 lakh rupees, right? So 50 times your 10 lakhs is about 5 crore rupees. You put 5 crores into the market, average dividend yield that you will get from here is about 1 to 2 percent. So in some years, you will be able to recover some money from the market, in other years, you will be able to give it back. But over a longer period of time, you will see that 50 times your annual expense is a good enough corpus to create to be considered financially free. Another aspect of this financial freedom is if you put this into a bank every and you make about 9% every year, 8% every year, thereabouts. And on a long term basis, inflation is about 6, 7, 8%. So basically, you will be able to make two ends meet, and also, if you are not able to make two ends meet, you can draw some out from a principal as well. But becoming financially free, becoming uh, having uh, having made enough, this is not easy. This is this, these are the numbers which come to our mind. But the way to get about them, you have to work from all sides. First is when you pass out from this place, you get a fat check, salary check. Obviously, what happens is. When you get some money, the first thing that a person does when you are young, you can actually put that money in the stock market, but you will not do that. Normally what you do is, you will put this money into assets that can, uh, like, like, like I can give you, uh, let's put it another way. Coming back to the same example, t into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n. So if you are doing well in life and somebody gives you a stock idea and you think it's a good idea and you are making say about 15 lakhs every year, 
And then you buy that stock, say about uh, 50,000 rupees worth of that stock. That is what you do. You say, no, I don't want to put anything more. Let me tell you, it's good enough to come into the market by making small purchases. Because even if that stock goes up 10 times, 15 times, 20 times, 50, many people, or if you visit any online forum, the guy who screams the loudest there, online chat forums or websites or money network message boards, the guy who screams the loudest have, buys only 50 shares. The guy who buys 5,000 shares will keep quiet and he will just read and he will smile and pass it on. But the guy who makes the maximum amount of noise will be the guy who buys 50 shares. Because, now coming back to this, if you put 15,000, 20,000 into a stock and then you look at it every day and then you track it and then you open and you download the annual report with some bandwidth, what are you achieving out of it? 15,000 even if it goes up 100 times. 15,000, 1 lakh, 50, 15 lakhs. That's what you're making one year. And what point? What did you just get? What did you just get? A stock which goes up 100 times. So the point is, don't buy too many stocks, don't come into the market, but when you come into the market, try and see that I want to take only of those companies where I'm sure that this money is going to quadruple itself, go up 5 times, 10 times, 15 times, 20 times. One way of doing that is, one way of doing that is not to have too many bets around. Of course, the way I have made my money is not the only way that money can be made. Let me tell you very clearly. But that's the way in which I can talk at least as much as I know for you to share. You can take it, you can uh, improvise upon it, or you can say, okay, this is not my strategy. I am a different one. It's perfectly normal. It's not necessary for everybody to be investing in the same way and thinking the same. Because if everybody invests in the same way and thought the same, there would have been no market. Because if everybody wants to buy, everybody wants to sell, there would be no market. So only the different opinions didn't make a market. So coming back to this, if you have 1% exposure, 2% exposure into a unit tech, and unit tech went up 50 times, you have a 2% exposure. 2% is the percentage of your total dollars. Then your portfolio is just doubling. And you got a once in a decade opportunity of buying unit tech in 2003. You got it. You were sure you were smart enough and you got just 2% of it. So when somebody knows, you know, comes to me and says, you know, I bought this stock, I bought that stock, I bought Asher Motor at 400, I say, it's, 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 it's a bit immoral to ask anyone how many shares you will have. Because it's just like, it's, it's not proper in the stock market sense. So what, what, what I normally do is say, what percentage of your portfolio was allocated to Asher when you started? So I can tell you very clearly, any guy who had Asher Motor from 300 and ran it all the way up to 10,000 had only 50 shares or 100 shares or 200 shares. That is in the context of his portfolio. His portfolio was 100 crores, he would have said 20 lakhs. If the portfolio was 50 crores, he would have said 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs. Because had he had a larger exposure in Asher, he would have sold a few. And the only guy who don't, uh, and, and the only thing that, and the only advice that you get is when the stock blows up is, why don't you sell now? It is doubled. Why don't you sell now and make the balance shares free? Imagine the same situation with you having bought a flat, flat in, say, Gurgaon or in Bangalore near MG Road. So, what happens is you bought a flat for 1.5 crores and now it's 3.5 crores. Do you sit down at the dinner table with your wife and your parents and discuss this flat you know has gone up a lot, why don't we just sell the veranda and then get the other part <laughs> Or why don't we sell the kitchen in the living room so we can have the bathroom and the room free? You don't do it that way. The, the only reason why people make money in real estate are the only reasons. One of the reasons which they can show to others and which, they, which makes them feel good about is they put large chunks of money at work. You will never go to buy a flat with 15,000 rupees. But if you want to buy a stock at Unitec, you will buy it for 15,000 rupees. If somebody told you that, uh, why don't you buy a stock, say, Maruti, what would you do? Say, Thik hai yaar, Pachadar mein dele te ka. Pachadar mein to Maruti gaadi bhi nahi aapke. You have to think as to what you want to do in life in the stock market. I am not discouraging you, I am not encouraging you, I am not selling dreams to you. It doesn't happen, you will lose it. But what I'm trying to tell you is, whenever you're getting opportunity, try and get hard. And what happens is, 
If you find that there are only four, five, six opportunities for you, that's fine. You need not have 20 companies to invest in. You can only be with those four, five, six companies. Now, how is this big money made? 20 bags, 30 bags, 40 bags, 50 bags. How is this big money made? This big money is made in a bull market. Right? Now, and this big money is also lost in a bear market. So, bull market and a bear market isn't life and death, but it's very close to that. I've experienced death in 2008. My financial death almost. I was in financial coma. It's not that I was insolvent or something. But in 2008, in October, I still remember the markets were falling almost every day. We were discussing in car and <coughs> it was falling every day. It felt like stone in water. And I didn't know what to do. So, I used to get up. I mean, I don't know whether I used to sleep in those days or not. Because when I woke up, you just put on the TV just to see how, about, how much down is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ would invariably show you around 40, 50, 100, whatever points. Or the Dow Jones, or that point. Japan used to open at 5, 5, 30. So first thing you open up was, you get the land of the rising sun. As to whether the sun is setting or it is still rising. So then, <laughs> then you open up your mobile. You said, Acha, Sade Paan, Kujay, Kwan, 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 And from the people, of course, when you are talking to someone, you know who, what time somebody gets up, you call him. Kya lag raha hai? How much more will this for when you got the same answer? But the answer was, was never satisfactory because no one knew. The answer was, no, no, it's not giri gaya, what could he gaya? Bas ek do din ga, now it's going to be cover. And ek do din, ek do din kar gaya from 13, 14,000 points, it dropped right up to 8,000 points. And that time it seemed that the world was coming to an end, but just because I had no other work, had I got a shop of my own or a cafeteria or maybe a small textile running mill, I would have sold everything. And put the entire money into my business. But I don't have business, and the only incentive for me to stay invested was because I didn't know what to do with this cash. And I sold once in March 2009. I had some Titan shares, so I sold a few thousand shares at 700 something of Titan. I said, No, now I have to get out of this. It has yet. I've had it enough. The moment I sold it, my discomfort grew many fold. Because the first thing I said was, I'm selling this because the price has come down. Why should I sell just because the price has come down? This thought came to me after I sold. But before I sold, I was being overclouded by a thought that just because the price is coming up, I have to sell. So I bought it back and then the story started. Then I got page industries because I was wearing jockey all the time. So I'll tell you about these things. But what I'm trying to tell you is, it is very, very painful. It is very painful. The market, and if, the, and if you're invested in the market and it is not painful for you, then maybe you're not meaningfully invested also. But the only criteria that you can make a lot of money is in a bull market, is in a trending market. I'll give you three instances of a bull market. 1992, the Hashan Mehta era, asked people who were there in the market at that time, stock called ACC, which went up, I think, from 200 rupees to 10,000 rupees. That's before being split in bonus interest, right? Tata Steel, all world economy stocks, because there was a liberalization. The government of India in 91 had removed controls and they had opened up the economy and cement was uh, liberate, it was liberalized from the they, 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 they could choose prices at which they would want they would have liked to sell. So that was a bull market. So if you were, if you bought ACC during that time, of course there's no hindsight. I will tell you how we could how we can actually forecast what will come next. If we bought, bought if you could have bought ACC it would have changed lives. 1994, 95, 96, 97, 98 was the era of Infosys and software. Absolutely. 1998, Infosys trading at a PE of 30 times. 1998, trading at a PE of 30 times. And then, you could have said, 30 times is too much for Infosys, but in the next two years, the stock went up 50 times. From a PE of 30, it went to a PE of 300. So that is what happened. Similarly, 2001, 2002, was the era of Bharti, mobile telephony, infrastructure stocks, Unitech, all those construction companies, 2003 to 2008, Pantaloon retail, where I made my money. 2009, there about, thereafter, most of these consumer discretionary stocks, Page Industries, Tritigan Estates, Kajaria Ceramics, Sarah Ceramics, Sanitary Ware, uh, you name it, Hawkins Cooler, which I own, of course, uh, things like that. And anything related to semi urban and rural area. So, most of these stocks, when they go up, they don't go up by 2, 3, 4 times. They go up 20, 30, 40 times. The trick is, in the first 6 years of operation, a company grows earnings by 10 times, its price earnings ratio, which I think all of you know what it means, goes up 2, 3, 4 times. So from a 10 PE, 
it goes to about 20 p, 30 p, or 40 p. And this price earnings ratio keeps expanding and remains at that level till the point growth does not stop. It has always happened like this. Does not mean it will always keep on happening like this. But it always, most of the time, it happens like this. Whenever the growth increases, the price earnings increases, and it remains at level till the time the company is able to grow at its own pace. Now, what happens is, how do you identify these stocks? First is, let me give you four, five, seven points. First is, most of these stocks that go up 10, 20, 30, 40 times are part of a trend. It's like hunting in packs. You never have a single guy going up 10, 20, 30, 40 times. That's the group effect on this. So in 1992, it was ACC and Tata Steel and most of these cyclical related companies. In 2000, it was this Wipro, Infosys, Satya, and Astec, and all those companies. Z Telephone, T that TNT, that's technology, media, and telecommunication. But TMT Gandhi was, it was called. 2003 to 2007, 2008, Unitech, all those construction companies, Dashan Duro, Management Construction, IDRCL, HCIL, NCC, you name it, Bharti Airtel, Pantaloon Retail. So you always knew that this is what is happening. 2003 to 2008, it was just not one company. You missed all of it, and now in 2009, you're looking at a stock, you're saying, Age Industries, can it grow at, uh, can, it, can, can it go up? You say, okay, let's see. So when Page goes up, and Trinity Prestige goes up, and Hawkins goes up, and Kajalia goes up, and Lao Pala class goes up, you know, then you should back and say, oh, and, and Symphony Coolers goes up, and then most of these stocks I might have an interest in, I would have recommended, so uh, let's take it in the back of But then you should back and say, it's not just one company, it's the entire pack going up again. Why are all these companies going up? So on the other hand, if you just find it, okay, only Page is going up, the other companies are not going up from the sector, that means you have to still check and think. But if everybody is going up in that sector, then obviously you become more sure if this is a sector made rally. See, in a bull market, the index doubles, quadruples, and goes up three, four times. But sector leaders go up 30, 40, 50, 60 times. Again, what are the individual characteristics of these companies? What are their financials? First is, all these companies will be showing above average growth. So, Infosys was growing at 50, 60, 70 percent. Vipro was growing at that rate, Satyam was growing at that rate, Mastek was growing at that rate. It was not key, you'll say, Are you 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 So the first thing we have to think is, if the going is so good, why is only Infosys growing? Why aren't the others growing? But if the entire sector is growing, of course some of them will also fudge books. That is sure, but that is for part B. You can't have everything in one store. But most of the companies will show above average earnings growth. So in 2009, just open up the annual reports and see the rate at which Page Industries, TTK Prestige, Kajaria Ceramics, Sanitary Bell, Symphony Coolers, most of these companies have grown. Titan Industries, of course, how many have already So most of these companies, of course, they always grow up, they have grown at 20, more than 25 percent. And when the GDP growth was only 5, 5 and a half or 6 percent. So then you say this entire sector is moving. Another interesting thing to see is first generation entrepreneurs. You can add Jupiter Ford works to this list also, Dominus Pisa. First generation entrepreneurs. You know, people say, what is the management's track record? You will never get a hundred time money making opportunity in a Tata company, right? Because the Tatas will never sell it cheap to you. They've got enough money of their own. The hundred time money making opportunity will come to you in a Unitech. It will come to you in Infosys. It might come to you in Pantaloon uh, Retail because who uh, share of Mojo owners hai, they don't have enough capital of their own, they have to come to the market. So whether it's expensive or it's not expensive, you have to come to the market. You need to Bharti Airtel. So what did Mr. Sunil Bharti do? When he, had, when he opened a telecom company, he had no money, he came for an IPO. And then when he wanted to do his uh, retailing business, he said, I made money enough of my own, why should I come out with an IPO? He don't come out with an IPO. So the first generation entrepreneurs, people with no history, People with no history, they are a nice place for you to start looking from. You have to say, no, he's a first generation guy, I've got to believe him. And how much can you lose in buying a stock? Tell me, how much How much percent can you lose in buying a stock? 100%, 100%, don't laugh because 100% is a lot of money. But how much can you make buying a stock? 100, 200, 300, 400, 1000, 10,000, infinity, theoretically infinity. 
Then find out the amounts of money can be made for buying a stock. So you're losing only 100 percent, and you're making an infinite amount of money in any stock, and yet most of us lose money buying stocks. Why can't we just play the property game? You know, if any any relative in your house who's got a portfolio for the last 25 years and suddenly it's become 50 lakhs, most of the time you will find that a 50 lakhs portfolio comprises of only might comprise of 50 stocks, but out of that, 48 lakhs would have been contributed by only three companies because he just let his profits run. He did not say that my house at Gurgaon has gone up in value, so let me sell my valid down. He didn't do that because he wasn't connected to the market also. So, when these companies come to you, you have to buy them and you have to hold them on. Hold them on up to what point? Up to a point, we'll come back to this later. Another uh, aspect of looking at how this money is made is, you look at companies with smaller market caps. Most of these companies that went up were very small market caps. was 350 crores in 2009 March. So 350 crores, 200 crores, 80 crores, of course the entire market cap of the country is also increased. So this market cap variance has to be looked at it from that context. But this is one area where you have to see also as to how much money is being made. because. Smaller companies work with a smaller base. It's easier to grow at 50-50% when you have a market cap of 200, 300, 400 crores and a small sales figure. Because the market remains unsaturated and you can grow by creating new distributors, new products or by getting into new geographies. But once the market cap reaches a sizable figure, once they become large cap, then it becomes difficult for these companies to grow at a faster pace. So these are the two, three, four, five distinguishing features. But most of the time, wherever money has been made, it has been made in buying sectors that are new. It has started from the 16th, 17th century. I don't know how many of you have heard about the tulip mania, where tulip bulbs were uh, bought in Holland. So, the Dutch ship day, they saw tulips for the first time. And there has to be great economic prosperity in the country. You can't have a new trend developed in Bangladesh. Bangladesh. New trend will always start from a country which has solid economic prosperity. So, in 19, uh, in the uh, uh, 16th, 17th century, uh, the tulip mania was formed in Holland, where one tulip bulb was worth several yards of land. So, people sold their land and they bought tulip bulbs. And ultimately, the crisis, ultimately, the bomb crashed. So another big problem was South Sea Company, happened in, UI, uh, happened in UK. Where they said, okay, we were. At the time, East India Company was very famous. They had uh, less than 500 shareholders and they were minting money because they were trading with India. So these guys, they thought of a noble scheme. They thought, okay, let's go to this, uh, let's go to South America and then we'll trade. So they formed a company there. So that is how it happened. In the 1840s to 1850s, a new thing that happened in England was the invention of the engine, of the uh, railway system, the steam engine. So a new boom happened in railway stocks in UK in the 1840s, 1850s. And the guy who led it all, George Hudson, I think his name was, he died leaving then only, I think, 250 or 300 pounds. But that is what happens. But with all these things, we get something new. So from the railway mania, we got the railways. Right? In 1920s, we all talk about 1929 US crash. You know how the markets fell from so and so point, and it came down to so and so point. But before that, the US market had also gone up 5, 6, 7 times the index. And what was new at that time? How many things were discovered? Just count it on your fingers. Television, aeroplanes, cars, you know, almost everything was being discovered. So, the new things that happened at that time had actually created a bull market. Again, US was into prosperity in the 1920s. So, the bubble actually hit point of prosperity. In 1840s, UK was actually ruling the world everywhere. So that is when it uh, hit UK. In 1980s, Japan, the Nikkei, they went up to I think 39,000 of their walks. Why? Because Japan was a new superpower of the world. The upcoming superpower, you could call it. Economically, of course. So that is how it happened. So the bubble will always hit a country which is at an advanced level of economic uh, freedom. So that is what it happens. So if when you add a new new sector in a, and most of these bubble and whenever a bubble will come to you, you can be rest assured it will always be on 
from lowering interest rates. Or Papa, they never come to you. What a question? We talked about rate analysis and how the IT, uh, oh. IT industry grew and then you know, in fact, the industry that was good at a particular point of time. So in the coming time in India, can you see seeing any industry that could be growing? Yeah, sure, we'll, 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 we'll do that. We'll do that. Once I complete it, I'll go there. I'm going almost extempo because I'm not going to a structured format. I just want to put whatever I think is going to work. So we will do it. So whenever a bubble comes to you, you have to be prepared. See, the people who don't participate in the bubble will always blame it. And the people who participate in the bubble will always swear by it. My biggest money in my life, the initial capital, was built by buying a company called Patrimony Retail. Patrimony Retail. Negative cash flows, severe equity diluter, increasing debts, okay. and uh, uh, I don't know, but uh, it was a perfect case of financial dot dot dot. But the point is, I made money out of it. That's it. And uh, it was very easy. It is very easy for you to blame something. Of course, when I don't buy a stock, I say you know, how to see each other. There's nothing faltu in the market. Everything goes up with a reason, everything comes down with a reason. But the point is, if you have made money from there, you can't complain. Why should you complain? You have made money and money is no color. Of course, we say the green back and this and that, but that's just to, instead of a dollar, you are saying green back. But money is actually no color, as long as it is legally made. <laughs> if it is illegally made, then, then we have a problem. But what I'm trying to tell you is, a new trend is what will actually help you make it big. So whenever you get a new trend, whenever you find one, you have to watch it very closely. A stock which you bought and it goes up. You did not sell it, you can buy more of it. My first purchase of paying industry was 350. The last purchase was very close to the current price, maybe a little lower. Because I can't buy today's stock at yesterday's price. No? If you give me 20 rupees today, yeah, sir, I like a lecture, this is 20 rupees for me, I can't it. So what do I do? I will have to buy stock at today's price itself. I cannot read. I, I cannot go back into time and say, okay, I'm back in 2009. And let me buy it today. And most people want to do is, just because the price of the stock that they bought some time back has gone up, and they get new money today, they look for new investing ideas. Whereas the best stock to own would be the one which you already own. The best stock to buy is in most times the one which you already own. Because you understand the company very well, you know how they are doing, the company has delivered for you. It's just like if a stock goes up five times and you sell it, it's like saying, you got two kids at home and the guy who always comes first in class, he said, you got to come to you got to pamper him, you got to say, okay, this guy is doing it. Ha, the day that guy, who's got the kid who comes first in class, he starts dropping in his studies, then you start penalizing him. No, you won't get TV, no, you won't get this, you won't get this. Every time he's performing in line with your expectations, you just want to sell him off just because he just because the price has gone up. That's not done. You don't make big money that way. Because let me tell you, you will never be as confident about the company when you first buy the stock. It's happened with me. And whenever I use the word never, please you think that in the stock market you should never use the word never, but still I do it because we are in a flow of talking, so that is not. But you will never be as confident about the stock. When you first buy it, you want the company to deliver to you, you want the earnings to go up over a period of time, and that is why what you have to do is once you bought the stock, you watch it closely. If the stock price goes up, then you buy more of it. If it goes up, you buy more of it. There's no harm because the earnings are also going up in the price. If just the price is going up and the earnings are not going up, then you sell all of it. But if the price is going up and the earnings are also going up, then you buy more of the stock. What's the harm? And about the point of how to catch these big trends. Once these trends develop, they don't stop in one and two years. They will continue for three, four, five, seven, ten years also. But Modi ji kaam kare ya nahi kare. Stock market na pehli uska price aa gaya. The stock market is a wonderful thing. If a company will grow for ten years, you will make all your money in the first six years. The market will discount everything to the maximum. Look at it from that angle. If a company is supposed to grow at 30% from 10 years, the market will not leave it on the ninth year with 
a potential 30% upwards. It will take all of it and leave only 10 to 12% for the new car investment. So the price will build up. That's what we call the PE expansion. And the PE just keeps going up. And a PE expansion for a company with entry barriers, for a company with, a, with entry barriers, a PE expansion is a permanent feature. A company without entry barriers, a PE expansion is followed by a key PE contraction again. What's a good business? A good business is one when you buy on cash and you sell on cash. When you buy on credit and you sell on cash. Like, I will be good with the jubilant footballs. You can never go to the prison and say, I will have a salary million to pay. They won't serve you anything. So, you have to look at companies who are right on working up in the markets. Since you guys just look at the balance sheet. You're going to have large creditors and very small debtors and more of cash. But, when you do the quick ratio and current ratio, you always want to use one current ratio once a year. But when you come to the stock market, you want a company that takes more credit. Why would everybody want to give credit to this company? Because this company is credit worthy. Then, a P expansion happens more easily to a company which works with free cash flows. If it's working with negative cash flow, that means it has to dilute equity. So if I get a company which is working with negative cash flows, like, then it will have to dilute equity. How does it make ends meet? That is what happened to Pantalone Retail. That is what happened to all these construction companies. That is what happens to most of these real estate infra companies. They have to dilute because their cash flows are negative. Now, the third thing. If you got a 40% grower, <laughs> and which pays you a dividend yield of 1 or 2% on the current price, and it's a free cash flow company, then let me tell you and let me assure you that you are not going to see a very big price erosion. Why? If growth slows down, if growth slows down, this company will not invest into further capex. That should be clear. If there is no growth, why should I put up capital expenditure? What will it do with that cash? It will give you back dividends. And once it gives you back dividends, the stock price will not fall. Because there are many companies they trade on the PE of 50. Anyone knows the PE ratio? Yes, over here. 45. 45, 50, whatever. Nestle doesn't grow at 45%, it grows only at 15, 16%. But because it pays you a hefty dividend, markets pay up. I mean, dividend is like, is like a, is the biggest uh, catalyst for a PE expansion. Because that's the only indicator. That money is for real. Taxes paid to the government only indicate that money is for real. Nobody pays real money in taxes and dividends by showing fake profits. So, there's a company called Web of Gems. It doesn't pay dividends, it doesn't pay taxes. So, how do I believe what they're doing? Then you can say, but it said it ended, it didn't go to 2000. It didn't go to 2000. My life doesn't get worse off because I couldn't buy Web of Gems in 800. As long as I got something else to make money from. You cannot make money from all the stocks in the market. You can make money only from a few. And when you make money, you have to be sure that you are making it at the minimum point of risk. You, uh, you, you could have done indifference curves in uh, economics. For a minimum amount of this, a maximum of that. Right? So that is how you have to be. For an equal amount of risk, for an equal amount of risk, I would like to maximize rewards. And for an equal amount of rewards, I would like to minimize risk. So if you tell me that I make money, I'll make 20% in Infosys next year, and I'll make 20% in some Rambabu Gupta software company starting in Bangalore next year, why should I go to this place? I will make 20% in Infosys. But if you're in a crowd of 100 people, and you say, you know guys, I bought Infosys and I made 20%, there will be nobody cheering for you. What if you say, I bought this obscure looking little old company, Nambabu Gupta, on one street in Bangalore and nobody was there and as I uh, got in, there was a darkness all around and the secretary came out and she came to me and said, nobody is here, but still I got a sense and I bought the stock next day. You will get lots of claps. So, you have to understand, either you have to maximize the world or you have to minimize risk. I have no regrets that I missed Russian work. I have no regrets, let me tell you. And I am not talking like a loser. Because, I say to Uttri, why? If somebody gave me extra money, 
First time Pantaloon in 2002, I saw a crowd there. And that time, uh, I didn't know it belonged to Pantaloon. And in Calcutta, I, I have this uh, documented in my book and elsewhere also. I used to stand outside the store. There was this West Side, free cash flow, debt, cash and balance sheet. And there was this Pantaloon. West Side was owned by Tata. Pantaloon was owned by an unknown Mr. Kishore Piani. But the crowd at Pantaloon was humongous, if you remember 10 years back. People used to walk in and come out with bags. I used to stand there and say, and from parts of us, which is 2-3 kilometers away from Kamak Street, we used to take a taxi and I used to tell the taxi driver, take me to Pantaloon, I take me to West Side. He would say, Kaha Yala, I said, West Side Chalo. He said, no, I don't know. Then my wife used to say, why don't you tell him? I said, no, no. West Side didn't know, I said, no, I don't know. He said, Pantaloon, he knows, he knows. He used to take me to Pantaloon. That was the only thing that people were going to Pantaloon. Three kilometers either side of the road, I used to ask people, West Side, Kaha Yala, Nei Mago, Pantaloon, Kaha Yala, Aage Jaake Right Side. That is giving an indication. That is called Scuttlebutt. But this you have to do in the initial years of a company. You don't have to go to the railway station to ask people ki aapko Maggie achha lagta hai ki nahi. That company is established now. That analysis did not be done anymore. But people try and copy it. Just because somebody did it there, I want to talk about Maggie all the time. Because Philip Fisher in his book, Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, writes about these things. But that is for the initial part, where the public itself is not sure, where you are yourself not sure as to whether this company will actually last it or not. So this is what you do. Then on the way back, generally you tell I tell. That is how it is. So things that are around you, you can get a terrific amount of money. When a child, when a child is born at home, just check out how much uh, Nestle products they use, how much of Horlicks he uses, and the price, they increase it at will. 5%, 10%, like that. So these companies, you will make money. The question is it might take you a little longer. So it's Investing is like the game between the tortoise and the rabbit. So, but if you are a tortoise, you will get to a destination. What difference does it make if you don't reach 100 crores and you just reach 50 crores? What difference does it make if you don't reach 20 crores, you reach 16 crores? It makes no difference. I think you guys, you've got your education back up with you. You can take risks. You can move ahead in the world. And you can actually put money to work when people like us who were uh, who just had started with making two ends meet. We didn't have enough, enough initial capital of our own. We had to borrow money from people. We had to borrow stocks from people and lend it to them. Actually, my big break came in uh, 2001 when the WTC was crashed out. Thanks to Osama bin Laden, made his own offer. Rest in peace. Why? Because I had a lot of insurance policies. Because as a family business, we were big. So a lot of insurance policies had gone almost, uh, I mean, we, we had not uh, paid the premiums and paid the uh, we were defaulters there. So I thought, where, where will I get the money to pay the premium? So why not just in cash everything? So I got I encashed everything, we got a term policy instead. And when I encashed everything, the check arrived just one or two days before the WTC crashed. So when WTC crashed, the entire market, market fell like a pack of stones. But then at that time, I had these insurance money refunds which I had got from surrendering all my policies which I put to the market. So these were events which it can never happen. If you ask me, can I do it again? No, I don't know. Because for, for me to do it again, I will need another song in love. And another way in which I can encash it. That's not possible. But in some other way, you will get that opportunity. But what happens is when you look into the market, you look around people around you, and you ask them as to how much money you have to make. First thing is, you have to take a very, very considered approach. And you have to say, this is what I want to put in every month. And this is what I want to make. In the market, you won't get mangoes at the price of bananas. So if you are looking to buy a Hindustan Unilever, of course I am not a Unilever fan because it doesn't grow for much. I like companies that grow faster and take market share up. If you buy a Hindustan Unilever and say it's a P of 35, I want to buy it at a P of 6. At a P of 6, you will not you will only get a Vandavan textile. You won't get a Hindustan Unilever. At a P of 10, you will never get a Nestle. You will get only a company that is doing also auto ancillary work for a hero on that. So things like that, you cannot say that this P is the one single yardstick. Because P is not a uh, because P is not just dependent on growth, as most of you do. I don't know whether you do the P E G formula. What if G is zero, a company doesn't grow, you want to give it for free. <coughs> if P is equal to G and G is zero, he can never be zero. I'm not disputing this, but what I'm saying is we cannot use it. On a perfection copy paste model always. These things have to change because he is also dependent on free cash flows, which is dependent on management, 
it is dependent on uh, the dividends of the company makes, it is dependent on the operating history. Operating history means ten year track record. Why do the Asian pains get that be? For a ten year track record. Right? So this is this is how it happened. Now Asian pains, 50, 60 P. Why does it happen? If Modi ji is going to build 100 towns all over India, 100 cities, right? And again, a friend again back asking about the new trend. Then what will you need from those cities? You need them to be painted up. And with 50% market share, Asian pains will do the painting job. You can say it's going to be a 50, you can say money up. It's not money up. But it's not money up. Second thing, on Independence Day, Mr. PM said that we want schools to be set up with toilets. Sarah Sanitary Ware. Simple. Now, all schools will not have set up. They cannot afford it. But some will upgrade. The others will upgrade. The school, so these kind of things will happen. So Sarah is there. If these hundred cities are to be built, we will have to put tiles on the floor. Kajaniya ceramics. If these hundred cities are to be built and these towns and cities and these uh, towns will have shopping, uh, will, will have these uh, say residential units, then mortgage finances will have to come into play. We need a group finance, we need a repco home finance, we need an HDFC limited. You, you can also do with a Diva housing, but you have to be very sure in a leverage business. It is ten times more money borrowed from others. Simple. Now you say, okay, that is okay, but how will be, what else will benefit? Everything else will benefit. Anything which increases the consumer's income. From a GDP, uh, as a country's per capita income hits $1,500 and goes above, people sp start spending on discretionary. The father will still use Lux, but the son will use Jockey. And maybe after five years, the son might shift and upgrade to a Tommy Hilfiger. So, that is the setup. You have to look at everything that will be in demand. You just can't say that. If Modi ji will build cities, only infra companies will do well. Infra will not do well that much because they were leaders of the last bull run. And why do leaders of the last bull run do or not do well in the next bull run? Is because how many infra companies did we think we knew in 2003? Hardly. Hardly any. In 2014, we can name 20 infra companies without taking a breath. So that is how it is. So when you have too many people doing the same thing, you don't have pricing power. And you don't have, when you don't have pricing power, you cannot sustain the advantage for long. All advantages have to translate into pricing power. You cannot have a company at a PE of 10 and a pricing power of 0. That doesn't help you. Of course, infra, infra companies will do well. Of course, real estate developers will do well. But for you to actually retain the money which you will make doing all this, you will need actually a number of uh, different checkpoints to understand as to where the story is going. And you did not buy at the lowest point. You, if you, even if you buy the stock doubles, then also you make a lot of money. So the theory of this is that for you to make a lot of money, you have to catch a trend. Otherwise, of course you can double money, triple your money, but with a 3% exposure, 4% exposure, doubling, tripling doesn't help too much as much as, as, much as it should. But uh, one thing which uh, all of us, which, which we don't see, will also show a downward gift. But if most people, but for most people who do a uh, lot of Excel work, they try putting everything into a DCF. So if you're doing a DCF for a Tata scheme, it's not going to make any sense. Even Mr. Ajit Chatterjee, the CFO of Tata Steel, doesn't know the steel price in next month, we know next year. He can be approximately correct, but the, that precision engineering is in the building. So this is what you have to do. You have to find out stocks where you can take a very, very long term view. And it is better to put a lot of money into a few ideas which you understand very well and which can promise you a predictive ability assure, or assure you that this is going to grow. Let me give you an example. No matter what happens, HDFC will grow for the next 10-15 years. HDFC limited. It is going to grow at 9% mortgage rate to GDP. India has to go to 80-90% over the next 20-30 years. So if India goes to that rate, HDFC will make you money. And, but HDFC won't make you money because it doesn't make it will make only 18 20 percent. And the difference is when a guy goes into a bank and does his bank every he signs across a check and says, Okay, I'm okay with 8 percent of the money. And the moment he comes out and calls his broker and says, Keep my eye, he says, He looks at the price, he wants at least a double in six months. You can't have a diagram of returns like that. 
there has to be some generalization. So if you're going into an SDFC limited, you're investing money there, 18, 20 percent. Now the point is, 18, 20 percent compounded for 20, 30 years will make you a ton of money. You need not do anything more, as long as you can stay with the companies. So these are the easy rides in the market, the free rides, as you say. You just get in there and stay for the entire length of period. But most of the time, what we do is we like to double our money now and then go back into something. Or, or we look at how much it has gone. How much the stock has gone up tells us nothing about how much it can go up further. Stocks don't go up on the basis of how much they have gone up, but they go up on the basis of whether those companies can actually increase earnings or not. So these are the things I think which we have to understand when we are uh, looking up on a stock. Secondly, most, most of the time what we have to do is there is nothing to suggest that money can't be made in cyclicals. There is nothing to suggest that. Money can be made in cyclicals. It can be made two, three times. I have made it in 2009 when I got Kamsa, uh, Harmax and you know, these kind of companies. But it's a very dangerous trade to do because for a cyclical you need to have two points ready. The entry point and the exit point. But even for the HDFC limited or the nation trades, large caps are saying. There are smaller companies also in this league. Even look at them as well. Then you just have to make the entry decision correct and stay there for 10 20 years. Do nothing. And you know, but the problem is that if you do nothing, most of the people in this world will, uh, don't get satisfied by doing nothing. The urge to actually do something gets me. And a broker client relationship is such that either the broker makes money or the client makes money. Both of them can never make money. So whenever you find a broker and a client, you just say, the one of you who get rich. Both can't get rich normally. Because if you are trading every day in and out transaction costs, and see, if you are trading every day in and out, how can you keep a stock trade you go 100 times? I'm not selling a dream to you that you can do this, but stocks are supposed to go up that much. You are, you only have to put your money into stocks, and you show that they will go up 10, 15, 20 times. Of course, they will take a lot of time, they will take 10 years, 20 years. And in these 10, 20 years, you will have a lot of this global macro coming into play, the currency tightening, QE1, QE2, and what will Ravi do, and what will the Yugoslavia industrial interest production be. The one problem that we feel these days is we got too much of information, and there's too much of analysis for this information. And most of the time, people get unnecessarily drawn into this paralysis of analysis effect. That because there is so much of information, you just have to analyze everything that is being offered to you. It need not be that way. There are companies that will do, but you think people are not going to wear advertise just because you are increasing interest rates. No. People are going to do the same that they are doing every time. You think people are not going to have knowledge for their uh, children just because something else happens? No. You have to hear the theory coming into play is I want to buy the company with similar rewards and minimum risk. So if all these people are 20% and in Hindustan construction company gave me 25% estimated from this thing, futuristic, then what I would say is, I don't want an LCC, I'm sure of this money to make nowadays. So I just cut down on risk and I come here. One way of making money in the market is to avoid the bad decision. If you can, if you can just, I just had uh, in the last 12, 13, 14 years, I just had one bad decision because I did not take too many decisions. I don't took too many decisions, I would have also got 20 bad decisions. Which was Voltas, which is very well documented by why I bought Voltas and how it fell from a 160 or 280 when I sold. So, things like that you have to understand that when you are investing in the market, when you are investing in the market, first thing is you have to bring only that kind of capital which can make a meaningful gain for you. And if that capital is not making a meaningful gain, it can happen because your mindset is not prepared to make the ups and downs, or you are not well enough to handle it, so that's okay, that's not a crime. I can't handle the pain, that's it. I don't want to invest in the market. Nobody from my family ever invested into the market. I was the first person to put money in. Because maybe they, they didn't like it. Okay, that's okay. But if you are spending so much time here, and once you pass out, you are well equipped to understand things. You know, 90% of fund managers, Spend 90% of the time talking about the next 10% of marketing. What will we do next? So the first question that we get is, will we hit 30,000? And Baba, we are already 27,000, 30,000 is only 11% from here. 
So what if we don't hit? And if I am saying we will hit 30,000 and somebody is getting excited on that, why do I bank have the yield rate for 11% in about 14 15 months? That's it. So 30,000 is not a big thing. You have to forget about whether we get 30,000 or 40,000. You have to say, in 10 years, I have to grow my money 10 times. That is it. And what, why I am trying to tell you is, many of you will join the, will join the finance industry, the iBanking industry, the PE funds, and those things. And one thing strange which I have realized and noticed and never been able to understand is how it happens is, most of these fund managers lock up their money in years. Most of these guys who are under 500 crores, 1000 crores for others, their personal wealth, if you ask them, not even 40% is into the market. I'm saying most, not all. So, the point is, because they think that why should I put my money into equities because I'm already getting a job out of equities. But when you are doing it full time, then what excess uh, intelligence do you have in buying a real estate property? Because 18 hours you are looking at equities, so why not buy equities? So this is what happens. That's why I'm saying that to you is if you get into a job and there are few people who I know who be back so far who be into the savings bank account. Savings bank account is not 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs, 5 lakh balances, and maybe 3, 4, 5 accounts, even while the husband is while working, the wife is working, so there's no risk as such. My perspective is very different. If you put 10 lakhs into your savings account, and you maintain this balance for the next 20 years. And instead of that, if you just buy an HDFC, how much more money can you make? You always have a credit card. In times of an emergency, you swipe the plastic money out, get some cash, take care of your expenses, you get a salary check next month, pay it off, or else sell some shares and pay it off. Why hold yourself back for several years, waiting for an emergency to happen? which you do not want to happen and which in most cases does not happen. You just hold it back. When you are Patani Kap Lekha, Kap Lekha, I am very different. I am very different. And I request all of you not to uh, do what I am doing because, uh, you know, uh, I will say, uh, unless I am on leverage, I can't sleep better. <laughs> But my leverage is limited. Now it is limited. Earlier it was unlimited. Earlier it was a maximum what the bad guys could give me. So I still remember in 2001, what used to happen was uh, when the market used to fall, the SDFC guys and those guys gone, so I was marching gone. I told the market will go up tomorrow. So why? Because they are very popular. Well, that is how I used to tell them. It was so foolish on my part. But now it's well managed. My leverage is only up to 70% of my portfolio. I ensure that the interest payments will be set off with the dividends that I receive. So none of my dividends comes to me at home. It will normally be directed to interest payments. And how can somebody ask me how do you take care of your grocery bills? I say by taking loan from a bank. Yes, you take loan from a bank and you get the dividend, you pay him off. That's all. It's no crime there. It's no crime. And uh, most of my, uh, actually, you know, I have got this own mental problem also. When I look at gold, I can't look at the design, I can't look at the ornamental, I can't look at the craftsmanship of it. I say, this asset, it doesn't look good. That's all. So, in my family, uh, we, we have not bought any jewelry, we don't buy jewelry. And you know, the Marathi family, if you know, a lot of those silver utensils they have at home. Every old class, we do the name here, Chambi class. So, about two years, three years back, just to do everything, I, I, I actually. <coughs> I, I didn't convince actually, in some sense I also forced them and made them think as to how much this is useless being put up here. So we sold off all of those and we cut stocks out of that. So that is my problem. That's all everybody else's problem. But what I'm saying is I'm just giving you a mindset. And when I look at gold, see gold, this will outperform fixed deposits. The fixed deposit, this will do almost as good as real estate, maybe outperform, underperform real estate. So gold will underperform fixed deposits. Fixed deposits, I think, might underperform real estate or do only as much as it. So what do you do? You do That's all. You never hear of this gold buying and this diamond fascination. Of course, you have to do all of that, but you can leave that for later years. Once your money is, once your uh, equity portfolio goes up in value and it starts making money for you. But for the initial part, you have to take a big head on plan because 
one thing, nobody becomes rich by cutting down exponential. That will be the thing. But if you're in the initial stages and if you're in the stock market, you can get a stock which will work 10, 20, 30, 40 times, and that is the time you have to invest even by cutting down on exponential. So that is a habit which you have to uh, take upon you. Of course, since you will be uh, in regular you know, job in contact with people, you will also understand the risks of this game. But over a period of time, it's only people who will take risks they make money. But the risk has to be controlled. Like for an equal amount of credit, you have to see how much risk you can do or how much you can do. Here are two types of people in this world. One is who have the problems of plenty. And one is who have plenty of problems. You can upgrade yourself in the second category to the first category by taking some more problem in the initial stage. Just because you're drawing a sample of 20 lakhs per year doesn't mean that you have to grow 5 lakhs. Doesn't mean that. Do it for 2, 3, 4 years. Once the investments start to grow, you will get attracted to them. You will find that life has become more peaceful. You won't sleep every night going to bed. Oh, what a bad boss I have got. You won't feel bad. And then work becomes passion. What follows? Simple. And how do you know whether work is uh, whether work has become passion or not for you? Just think, are you excited on a Friday evening or are you upset on a Friday evening? And are you upset on a Monday morning or are you excited on a Monday morning? These two indicators will tell you enough whether your work is your passion or not. But for me, uh, when the market is closed, I don't know, I don't print anything, but I still want to see the price on my mobile every time. So that is what I do, what I love, because every two minutes, three minutes, I'll just put it down on the money get on the ticker and I just see how much the price is. It doesn't matter, but I keep doing it because I want to stay connected. Somebody uh, asked me that if you've given an opportunity, who will you give all your money to manage? Or who will you appoint as a fund manager to manage your money? I said, if I give my money to somebody, it will be, I breathe the market every time. So it will be like I'm not a respirator. So I can't give my money to anybody else. If I have to sell, I will sell everything and put it in the FD. I don't know what I do. But the point is, you have to be attached to it. And my attachment to the market does not come because I like stocks. Because I made money out of it. Even a dog you can keep at home, you give him food two times, you treat him well, he gets attached to you. So we are like the same thing. The market is giving us food to it, it is giving us uh, it is giving us some name, it is giving us uh, ensuring that we can have a night, good night's sleep, we don't have to worry at night. And that is all we need. So in the market, you have to love your market. You cannot blame the market over I, I see many people say, ah, market is <laughs> What market is happening? You don't understand what the market is happening. What is the market You can't do that. You have to take the market and say, no, this market is wrong. It's going to do everything that we can. Like uh, yesterday, day before, all the teachers and you said, teachers get the market. The sun said, all teachers get the market. There's no biggest teacher in the market. And there's no brutal teacher in the market also. Remember Mahabharat when uh, Sonacharya asked for the economy to come? In the market, if you get it wrong, the market takes your head off. So there's no problem to check on the market. But that is how it is. You have to understand that this is a market, you have to love the market, and you need not make money from all the stocks that you have. You can make money from a few of them, and then he gets up there like Not a thing. I can go on and on for six hours also, but you know, what's the question?